Animating video games is hard. That's why you see so many failures all of the time and why it's a full-time job at most game studios. And it's also why when I started making games, I started with things like tanks and cars because I knew I only had to animate a wheel spinning around, not a body moving and everything else. But if you really wanna get into game development, animation or at least setting up animations is a skill that you really should have. So today, I'm going to teach you a really quick way to set up a humanoid animation or a humanoid character that can run in multiple directions and map automatically to your controls and without very much work at all. It's a single little script, one tiny little animator, and a bunch of free assets. So if you want to learn how to animate, you want to get better at it, or you just want to know how to set up a character that can run around and aim wherever you want, and automatically map its animations or play the right animation based on the direction that you're running, then make sure you hit the like button and even subscribe if you want, but really just hit that like button. I appreciate it. Everybody else appreciates it. And we get more cool stuff like this. And after you click that like button, make sure you go down to the comments and grab this robot model that I'm using so that you can hook them up yourself and use them in your games or whatever else you want to do with them. All right, let's get started with how this character runs around, how he moves, and how he animates. We'll start by looking at our character prefab, and then we'll dive into the code that controls him and the animator. So let's inspect this prefab. We have here a player that's this robot model. It's essentially created from this robot by dragging it out here and adding some components to it. I'm going to delete the one that I've just added. Let's take a look at the components on our existing setup character. We have an animator here to control the animation. You'll see how that works shortly. We have a rigid body. We have a capsule collider. These are here not so much for the animation, but so that we don't walk through walls and so that we can collide with other objects. We don't necessarily need them for our animation though. I'm gonna collapse these both down and let's take a look at the part that we do need for our animation. And that's this player movement script. It has a speed variable on it and an aim layer mask that's set to terrain. Let's look really quickly at what that layer is and then we'll dive into the code. So under our layer section, we have a new layer here. If we go to add a layer, you'll see that I've added it as layer number eight and named it terrain. I've set that up to be the terrain object only. So if I click down here on the terrain, got my terrain object selected and you see that it's on that terrain layer. The reason for this is so that when I'm spinning around and aiming, that's the only thing that I'm looking at for my direction. Now you might be thinking, all right, Jason, thanks for showing me layers and prefabs, but can you get to the confusing, complicated stuff? Show me the hard code that I'm not gonna understand that's gonna make this all a waste of time. All right, let's dive into it now, but I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised because the code is actually relatively simple. We have a total of 49 lines of code, and a lot of that is just aimed on, well, aiming our character, not even the animation. Let's dive into how this code works and how it's all set up. Right at the top, you'll see that we have two serialized fields, one for our speed, you saw that was the adjustable speed variable in the inspector, and another for our aim layer mask. I had mentioned earlier that this is just so that we only aim at the ground, we don't aim at walls or mummies or other things that are coming along. Then we have an awake method. The awake method is caching our animator using the git component call and saving it off into this private field here on line eight. I'm using an expression body method here, because there's only one line, so I don't need to add the braces before and after. Then we have our update method. The update method aims towards the mouse, just as the method here says, and then does all the rest of our code. Let's take a look at the aiming really quickly for anybody who's curious about it, and then we'll dive into how we're controlling the movement and animation. I'll hit F12 to go to aim toward mouse, and scroll down a little bit so you can read the code. So here you'll see that we create a ray using camera.main.screenpointArray and passing in our input mouse position. This just gives us a ray straight into the scene. In an optimized situation, we might want to cache this camera, but for this case, it doesn't make any difference. Then we do a call to our raycast system. We use physics.raycast, we pass in our ray, and here we get back out the thing that we've hit, ideally the ground that we've hit. We pass in a maximum distance, so parameter three here is the max distance to shoot this ray away into the world. So imagine that the ground is 100 meters away from our camera. If our value was only 10, then we wouldn't hit the ground. But if it was 101, we would hit the ground. Here we use infinity so that it doesn't matter how far away or how far away it is. If our mouse is over the ground, we hit it. And we determine that it's only on the ground by using this aim layer mask as our fourth and final parameter or the layer mask. 
if we get a hit, so we're over the ground, then we calculate the direction by subtracting the directions. We flatten it out by setting the Y to zero. And the reason for this is that if we're up above or down below, I don't want to be aiming and tilting my character up and down. I want to just turn around and spin on the one axis or just spinning around the Y. So I need to keep the Y value at zero. Then we normalize it so that the distance between the two points isn't calculated, just the direction. We turn that distance and total movement vector into a, just a direction. That's essentially what normalize does. Then we set our forward to that direction. Cool, that's aiming, not animating and moving. So let's dive into animating and moving. How does that work? Then once we've got our direction and we're set kind of in our forward direction, which actually kind of does matter here for the code that you'll see in a moment, then we start to read our inputs. We'll read our horizontal input and our vertical input, which on my keyboard is just WASD, or it could be your thumbsticks on your controller. By the way, if you want to see this and the character running around shooting zombies and a whole bunch of other stuff with a controller in a full game, make sure that you're subscribed. I'm going to cover that soon in a video and a live stream, and it'll be a lot of fun. So make sure you've hit the like button and subscribe for that. All right, once we read those two axes, we convert them into a vector three for our movement that moves along the X axis, not at all along the Y axis. So our second parameter here is zero, no Y movement. And then we move on the Z axis with our vertical. So this makes it so that W and S go on the vertical axis and A and D go on the horizontal axis. It gives us our movement vector. If that vector's magnitude is greater than zero, so if it's anything other than zero and zero, we normalize it just to make sure that we're well, turning it into a direction and not a magnitude. And when, when you think about this, if you've never normalized a movement vector like this, if you have a one on the X or one on the horizontal and a one on the vertical, what you'll end up with is essentially like a 0.707 for both of them. And the reason for that is that you, you want a point. So imagine you've got this circle here. If you've got a value here and a value here on the end, you don't want the combined value to be the one over here in the corner. You want it to be this kind of one along the curve. And that's how you avoid things like running diagonally or strafing, giving you extra speed. You need to make sure that you're normalizing your vectors. So here we normalize it. We multiply it by our speed so that it's adjustable and time dot delta time so that it's tied to our frame rate. And then we translate it in world space, which just moves the object in world space. Now, if we rotated our world, it might move a little bit different. We'd have to adjust for that. Right now, we don't need to worry about it, though. We need to dive into the animating part. And this is the exciting part or the fun part. So buckle up. Here we go. The animating is controlled with two floats. We have a velocity z and a velocity x that we're passing in. We calculate them by using the dot product. So we use vector three dot dot. We pass in our movement normalized. So we use our movement vector or our direction. And then we get our transform forward as the second parameter. We use this for our z one. This is going to tell us whether we're moving forward or backward. So if we're moving forward, it's going to give us a positive value up to positive one. If we're moving backward, it'll give us a negative value up to neg or down to negative one. We do the same with velocity x to get our right and left. But for our second parameter, we pass in transform dot right. Now, if you want to understand how dot products work, there are a ton of great videos on it that have beautiful illustrations. And we'll explain exactly how this math works. I don't want to dive into it and create those illustrations in a not as great way as them. So I would look up how to use the dot product to determine going left and right or forward and back if you're curious how that works. But this is the code that you need to accomplish that task. Once we have our velocity on the Z and the X, and this is telling us how fast we're moving forward and back on the Z and how fast we're moving side to side on the X. And remember, this is all regardless of our rotation because we're using our transform forward and our transform right. So we can turn and get the correct values here. Once we have those, though, we pass them into our animator using animator.setFloat. And you might notice that this looks a little bit different than most calls to set float. What we're passing in here is our parameter name first, the velocity.z or velocity z. We pass in the value. And then there are two additional optional parameters here that I didn't even know about a long time ago. And they are the damp time and the delta time. What this does is allow us to smooth out the transition of this value over an amount of time. So here it would set our velocity to that new value over 0.1 seconds or a tenth of a second. And then we have to pass in time dot delta time to tell it how much time has actually passed in this frame. Now the reason for that is so that we don't get instant snapping. 
If you try it without this, you set this value to zero, what you'll notice is that the character will run and then snap instantly back to an animation or the idle animation, and they'll snap instantly to their run animation. This will give it a nice smooth blending so that it looks nice and clean. So let's save it off, go in there, look one more time at how it runs, and then take a look at the animator and see how we set that up. Now let's take a look at the final piece of the puzzle, the animator that's actually taking these values and converting them into a nice smooth animation. So we'll open up our animator component and I'm gonna open my player animator controller. Notice that it just has a single state, this one movement state. Sometimes you'll see it called locomotion or movement or whatever other thing. It doesn't really matter because it's a blend tree. If I click on it, you'll see that it's a blend tree right there. And I can double click on it to open it up and see all of my different animations. Now, if you're thinking, hey, look, you have a bunch of different animations, so obviously you're able to do this. I don't have these animations, so I can't do this. I don't have eight animations for my character. Well, you might actually be able to use these same animations. And that's because these animations come from a free service. They come from Mixamo that allows you to upload your own character, humanoid character, and then target any of their animation packs at it adjust them a little bit so you can maybe move out the character arm space, move it in, make them look really weird and put their hand against their chest or just adjust them so that they look right. And then you can download an entire pack like the rifle eight way locomotion pack that I used for this video. You'll be able to do motion in all of the different directions with the side steps, crouching, standing and everything else with or without a rifle if you grab the, the non rifle version. So let's take a look at how we've set this up. Once you've downloaded the animations, what do you do with them? How do you actually make it work in this blend tree? Well, first, if your animator doesn't have a blend tree, you need to go back up to that layer, right click and create a new blend tree. So you can either turn an existing state into a blend tree or hit from new blend tree and just create one. Then you'd give it a name, something like movement or locomotion, and then double click on it to open it up. Once you're in here, you'll see that you don't really have a lot of options. There's no motions set up. There's only one parameter available in this weird slider. Might be a little bit confusing. The first thing that you wanna do is change the blend type over from 1D to 2D simple directional. That'll add the second parameter. So we now have access to our velocity Z. So I'll select velocity Z for the second one. I had to grab it slightly off screen and we'll start adding some motions. So hit plus and hit add a motion field. And for this character, I really need nine motions. If I wanna go in eight different directions, including the idle or in addition to idling sitting in the middle, I'm gonna need a total of eight motions. Let's start with just five though, and then we'll add the last four afterward. So I'm gonna add five motions here and I hit, oops, I hit add blend tree. I wanna delete that second one right there, that third one by hitting the minus, delete. I'm going to hit add motion again and add motion again and one more time. So I've got five motions here. And you notice that the points and positions are all kind of weird. They're, they don't really make sense. The values that went into here automatically don't make sense either. And if I select some values in here, like, or select these compute position options, they never seem to make sense to me either. So what I want to do is set these up so that they actually do make sense. I want to have one value in here that's my idle animation when my velocity on the x and z is set to zero so if i'm not moving at all i want my character to just play his idle animation so i'm going to make that the first motion i'll leave zero for the value of x and for y and then i'll go find my idle rifle animation so I'll go down to my robot folder or the from that pack that i've downloaded the entire thing of find my idle here and grab my rifle idle and just drag it out here now, if yours is not named Rifle Idle because it's named Mixamo One, let me show you how to fix that real quick. You go over to the animation here, and then on this section of tabs, make sure that you click on the animation tab. You might be on the rig one or one of these other tabs. And then once you do that, you should see your animations. There should only be one animation if you use the latest version of Mixamo, and you made sure to choose the FBX for Unity option when you downloaded it. But then you, once you have that and you've got it selected, you can click right here and choose a new name and hit apply. You may also need to adjust the root transform rotation, turning the offset of this. I've noticed that with this robot character specifically, he is a little bit weird on his rotation. So I need to rotate him about 35 degrees to the left here or negative 35 degrees to make him look right, look perfect in his animation. So I'll show you that for the other character or the other animations as we go through too. 
So now that I've got my rifle idle selected or assigned, I need to set up my other animations. I need a walk forward, a walk backward, a walk left, and a walk right. And then we need to figure out what those positions are. Let's start with walk forward. So I'll take my walk forward animation right here, and I've renamed this to rifle walk forward. I'll drag that into my next animation section. And for this one, I want the forward position or the Z value to be at, I think, one. So if we have a positive one on the Z value, it means we're walking forward. So I just want to put a one there. I want to leave the X at zero and then look at the point here. It moved right up to the top. So it's up above or ahead of my character. Now I want to add one for moving backwards. Let's do the same thing. We'll go to our move forward. Let's see where's move backward or walk backward. There we go. We got rifle walk backwards. I'll drag that into this third field and I'll set the position value for Y to negative one so that it's back behind me. But notice that it's off to the left. It's off to the left here because position X is set to negative one. That should be zero so that it drops it right behind me. So now I've got one right behind me and one right in front of me. So I have these other two positions that are not really correct. So let's fix these before we assign the animations and then we'll look at the rotation offsets on all these animations as well. So I wanna have a walk left. What would that look like? Well, I'm thinking a negative one on the X is gonna push it to the left and then a zero on the Y will make it centered. So now it's directly to the left of me. And then for the walk right, we'll do a positive one and a zero as well. Now I need to assign these two animations. So we'll find our walk right and our walk left. Oh, it looks like they're right here at the bottom. Take my rifle walk, which is this right and drag that to the right one. That looks right. Oh no, I dragged it onto the left. I dragged the left one on. So I'll take the left one, drag it to the left and then take the right and drag it to right. Easy to redo if I mix them up. So now I've got this nice little diamond or try or yeah, like a, a, essentially a diamond, I guess, with a little spot in the middle that should control my animation. I'm gonna save this off. We're gonna hit play and see how this works before we add in some more animations. Actually, I lied. We're gonna first look at these offsets. So the forward offset that I ended up going with and make sure that you have bake into pose checked and loop time on all of these. If you don't have loop time, they'll only play once and then they'll stop animating. So for my walk forward, I went with a negative 41 on the offset. And let me just briefly show you how we come to those values too. Right down below, there's an animator preview window. And actually, let me unselect and reselect this animation so you can see it. So I click off the character, click back on, and I'll hit play and watch as the character moves around. I can hold the right mouse button to adjust this. And the goal here is to make the character move along straight or move straight along that blue axis. You can see here that negative 41 is not actually a good value. He's actually kind of moving a little bit to the side. So I can just grab this and slide it left or right until I see a value that looks about right where he's moving straight. So I think, what is this, negative 33 maybe would be a good value. So I'll change it to that, hit apply, and now I've adjusted it for my animation. If you ever need to get this working on your animations, your characters look like they're walking one way and animating another way, make sure that you go in there, check that bake into pose on the animation and adjust the offset. Now, if I also, if I drag my player over here, notice that he's just gonna walk in place. If you're seeing that, it's because your player probably is set up to not apply root motion, which you wanna make sure is the case. Now let's look at the offset on these other ones. The walk left is set to a negative 32. The walk right is set to a negative 49. And I believe my walk backward is set to a negative 41. Let's try that out and see if that looks good. I take my walk backward, I'm gonna drag the model right in here and look at that. Yeah, that seems pretty good. It's a little bit off, but I'm gonna leave it on the negative 41. All right, so let's see this in action. Let's see how it actually works. I'm gonna take my animator, drag it down to the project window and then drag around so I can see it. And then I need to go up to the base layer and make this new blend tree my default. So I'll right click on it and set as the layer default. Then I'm gonna double click on it to go back into it, hit play, make sure maximize is off and watch the character animate and run around. So I'll run to the left and look, that is doing the backwards. And if you look at the values there, you can see his Z value and his X value pretty much match up with what you would expect. If I sidestep, you see that the X is going farther to the left or the right or negative or positive. And if I go left and right or forward and backward, you see that the Z value is changing. And if I go right into the middle, I get this kind of a weird blend. If I stop, then he snaps back or slowly kind of snaps back into that smoothed animation, or the smooth idle animation. So let's see what it looks like when he doesn't have that snapping on real quick. And then let's set up the other animations. I'm gonna stop playing. I'm gonna go back into the code for one second. And let's see what it looks like without the smoothing. So if I take this little chunk of code here, the part that does the smoothing of our setting our float, save that off with it removed, and then go back into Unity 
What you should see is this weird little snap back to place. Let's see it in action. I'll hit play and then run over here and stop. And look at that, he just kind of instantly snaps. So that's the benefit of that cool little smoothing feature. Let's go back in, re-implement it, and then add in the other four directions. So I'm gonna hit Control Z, undo that change, go back to Unity and add in our other four directions. So now for our blend tree, we just need to set up our walk to the back left, walk forward left, forward right, and back right animations. So I'm gonna add in four new fields, add a field, add a field, add a field, and add a field. I'll put them into the correct positions. So for this will be, well, let's see, front left, we're gonna go a negative one on the X, which is to the left, and a one on the Y, which means front. And then we'll do front right, which would be a one on the X and a one on the Y. Then we'll do a back left, so a negative one and a negative one, and then a back right, so a positive one and a negative one. Now I've got boxes in all of my spots. I just need to assign the animation. So we'll go back over to our project view. We'll find the forward, let's see, what do we have? Forward left, let's drag that out to our forward and left field. Then we'll take our forward right and do the same. Take rifle, God, not that one, rifle walk forward right. By the way, if you have a hard time clicking through these, and you find yourself clicking off, you can always hit the lock button so that when you accidentally click on one of these things, it doesn't change your focus on your inspector. All right, so we've got forward right assigned, and we just need to add in the two backwards left and backwards right ones. So backwards right is right here. Take backwards right, that's positive on the X guy. Oh, I click and drag it, and then backwards left is the final one. Assign that right there. Now I should be able to hit play, run around, and watch this guy animate nice and smoothly between these different animations. Look at that. Everything looks pretty good. And even as I spin around my character, you'll see that the animations just pretty smoothly adjust. So I think it looks pretty good. It's pretty simple to set up. And if you're able to use humanoid animations and set your character up, it's a great way to have a nice looking character that just kind of runs around smoothly. Now, if you really want them to be perfect, you want to have the footsteps matching exactly, you have a couple other options. You can always go with the root motion animation where the animation's actually controlling the character movement, or you could set up a foot IK system or inverse kinematics. I don't wanna dive into either one of those right now because I find that most of the time, probably 95% of the time, just getting the right animations playing and making things look just about good enough covers the situation and makes it work right. Sometimes our main characters need to have super close animations and really great stuff, but for the majority of characters, something like this will just work and it'll make your game run great and uh, look cool. Anyway, if you're interested in seeing more of this, again, I'm going to do a full video where we'll dive into how to make this guy shoot mummies, run over platforms, open up things, and essentially build out a little mini game. You'll be able to watch that free on the stream and then watch the video later. Just make sure that you hit the like button, hit subscribe and all that stuff. And um, if you have questions or requests or recommendations for this um, or the extensions, make sure that you just drop a comment below and let me know and then I'll try to make, make them happen. All right, thanks again for watching. Really appreciate it again. Don't forget to hit that like button and goodbye.